This week on Dr. Drew After Dark. I was like, why are you so, this must be a weird fetish. Like, why do you want to date me so bad? He's like, you never bring up astrology. <laughs> I was like, is that how low the bar is out there? <laughs> Though sometimes things happen fast and there is a tear, there is always distortion of the architecture. Always. Uh, distortion I, of the architecture. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the ass no, eating's not no. for me. I don't know what goes on down there. I have horses. I don't want to, you know, I just, I don't know. Welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Hey everybody, welcome to Dr. After Dark. Uh, as always, thank you for being here. Thank you for the calls. Thank you for the emails. Thank you for the voice messages. Uh, thank you to the, all the cool guys out there for being a part of this. Thank you to the Booth Boys. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, oh, more yeah. with thank the Booth you. Boys yet to come, but today is a very special day. Somebody I'm a huge fan of, Whitney Cummings. I think she knows I'm a fan. Whitney, welcome. Really? I'm a thank fan of you. yours. But I'm a fan of yours as a, not just as a performer, but as a person. Really? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. No, I, we're sort of, I, we've been peripheral friends for a long time, and every time I've spoken to you, I've been like, oh, we, that was an interesting conversation. You know, we've, we've, Shared something, I mean, not not bullshit. You know? I'm a I'm a giant fan. I mean, I think most comics, it's very surreal to to know you because I, before I had health insurance, you were my doctor, <laughs> like for real, and that was that so up well. until like two years ago. <laughs> so thank you. And uh, I think most people are aware you, that you are expecting. Yes. And uh, I we just did a little uh, sort of selfie that we, I know where you put that Instagram or something. And I and I've seen it. Spank bank. <laughs> Whatever, it's all good. <laughs> and and, and it's, it's your mom's house, man. This is, this is where that all happens. I really get off on doctors talking to me. <laughs> so, so, I just found well, out I'm half Jewish, I realize root, now. Is, is, from your 23 and Me? It wasn't 23 and Me. It was uh, like and, and when my mom died, all like the secrets came out. And? And I'm half Jewish. I always kind of suspected it. Everyone suspected it. Um, but uh, my mom was like weirdly anti-Semitic. Oh. Like... <laughs> Like too anti-Semitic. The only ever person I've met like that is sitting in the booth over there. No. <laughs> What's up, dog? <laughs> she would just say things. She's like, be, "Don't be so Jewy about that." You know, she would just say things where you're just like, "What are you doing, mom?" Oh, she yeah. was traumatized. But she by was a it. blonde woman from Texas who oh, was. Boy. They were basically, you know, like, let's not talk about the fact that you're Jewish. And were they part of the diaspora from Russia and all that stuff? I don't Do know. know. I think Poland. Yeah, was yeah. More that's the, it was all Ukraine, Poland, yeah. Belarus. Whoosh, they all just came over here during the Russian Revolution. Yeah. And just my thing is that if you're going to change your name from a Jewish name to hide the fact that you're Jewish, why pick Cummings? <laughs> it just feels like a wild... It was probably Kaminsky or something. It's probably somebody else in oh. Ireland that just said, this is your name. Isn't it true that whatever your last name is, is like the etymology of what your parents used to do? Like Taylor, your... There's some of that. And also in Russia, it's where you're from. Ah, got it. Uh, and my name was converted to Pine. Mm. So there's a lot of pines out there that I guess I'm related to somehow. Okay, got it. So because yeah, it's like if, if, you know, Tanner, your parents were Tanners, butchers, yeah. butchers. Yeah, like yeah. Mine's coming. It, it, so I'm like, well, what were my ancestors up to? It's not, it, yeah, I don't think it was so much in English, but when oh. you get into other languages, it, they're very much you sort of see that. But I'm just thinking the, the pine thing was at Ellis Island, but a lot of the diaspora from my ancestry came through Canada and then down. Oh, so, wow. And so they didn't get the same stuff, hmm. the same whatever, become American right. stuff. Right, yeah. You, so. you, I mean, it's interesting because then there's like all the sort of ancestral trauma stuff. and then Yes, all well, the... that's that's what I was sort of going for. Mm -hmm. There's a shit ton. Yeah. Uh, the Jews carry all kinds of trauma around. Yeah, I don't like saunas. Just let that settle in. Just let that. Is just that, let that why? Just let that sink in. I don't like it. <laughs> Joe and Rogan, everyone's doing sauna. I'm yeah. in and I'm out. Yeah. I'm like no. I, well, there's. I you know, know how this ends. They say that uh, perhaps these traumas leave an epigenetic imprint, <laughs> and so saying. maybe that's what happened. I, I don't know. <laughs> but but I don't of, like when people make me work for them for free. I don't <laughs> like when people. <laughs> sorry. This is why they suspected me. <laughs> uh, but ba back to your sort of, uh, what should we call this, your ancestral connection, mm -hmm. you are expecting now. Yes. And so the lineage shall continue. Yes. Uh, and Weird. I said what I was leading to, as I said, I've said something twice now to, to Whitney, and I don't know why I keep saying it, except it's just true. I said pregnancy becomes you. Like you're oh. a, you're a, 
I don't know. Pregnancy looks good on you, and you look happy and healthy as a pregnant person. Is there some biological basis for men being attracted to women when they're pregnant? Yes, because it means we can't get pregnant. It's the best time to have sex with us. I love that thinking because that's how male brains work. (laughs) You're 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 onto something there. I I don't know what it is. Some men are like really attracted to it. I suspect it's more about. Fertility, knowing yeah, that, more. Yeah. But it feels more like that to me because I'm one of those people. Yeah. And some men are. Complete, you know, she can't run away. It, it, no. <laughs> also, good. That's male brain <laughs> stuff for sure. But no, it's more that that's the end game here, and it's sort of it's all sort of part of the libidinal sort of drive, yeah. right? Uh-huh. And, and but there are men that are repulsed by pregnant women. Really? Yeah, you'll come. They don't tell you, but you'll come across it. Gay men. And, uh, can you guys have any? You guys like pregnant women or no? Yes or no? No. Do See, I, like, I do mean, I as like, are you attracted? <laughs> you find them attractive. See, I find pregnant women attractive. I yeah, I mean, I, it like fills up your face. Your yeah. lips get a little bit bigger. Your boobs get bigger. It's your boobs get they, way bigger. Yeah. But they're so in so much pain, you can't. We touch don't care them. about that. See, it's it's even better. Mm-hmm. You know that you're gonna hurt us when you. Touch Nobody our else boobs. gonna touch them. It's yeah, alright. Yeah, we know we're gonna hurt you. There you go. The Good. craziest thing is you're, we're crying all the time. Guys are into that. The wildest thing is that your nipples get darker. Oh yeah. Which yeah. is a whole thing. Which whole apparently, thing. there's some kind of primordial attraction to darker nipples because that's oh. how the babies found the nipple. When oh, interesting. Breastfeeding. Well, so that fits. Uh-huh. And all if you, that kind of thinking is how you get to the truth. That's mm. how you figure out where this stuff is coming from. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I didn't hear from any yet. What he uh, Nadav's not into it. Any uh, hearing from me that do I like pregnant? Are women? you attracted to pregnant? Do I have women? a pregnant woman? Are you repulsed to? No, I, don't. no, I, no, I didn't say fetish. I didn't say fetish. Because there's a fetish too. Watch out for those guys. That's None different. of this adds Sounds up. Like <laughs> Why? Yeah, guys will be like, I'm not into that. I'm not into that. MILF porn is number one. The numbers they're don't not, lie. Pre- they're not so, pregnant. Not in those pregnant. Videos. Pregnant doesn't mean MILF. <laughs> and, and, yet. Well, they were pregnant. Even weirder. That's okay. That's, I, that, do guys, that's weird. Do guys watch MILF porn? What, what's the reason? Is it number one to just make sure it's not underage? Like, I just want to make sure my algorithm. There, there's that. Okay. Or is it like your wife just had a kid and you want to go watch milk porn to make sure it's all normal? Like, that's what my wife should look like right now. <laughs> like, you know, I'm just so curious. I, 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 th- I, I don't have, I find my peer age very attractive. Mm. And so there's a lot of older people around. <laughs> Weirdo. No, no, I just, I just. Creep. <laughs> but no, I, I'm, I'm happy for that because if I were distracted to 20 year olds, I'd yeah. be like, mm. yeah. But I, I thankfully find my peerage very attractive, and and I and that's sort of what that is for people that that are like me. Mm. But there's a weirder thing going on, which is that, that milfs can use the internet. That how are they uploading the videos? I'm like, someone's mom knows how to upload a video. Like, how do I get that? Mom? That and that young men are into older women right now. That's kind of a peculiar. Trust phenomenon. me. Oh, I'm aware. Yeah. So that's a new I've thing. Mostly have got younger guys that always want to date me. Yes. And I don't know if it's just because you know it's impossible to afford rent these days. Some of it is that. <laughs> <laughs> They're sick of being poor. So, some of it is your. There's a lesser risk of pregnancy mm-hmm. as you age. And yeah. Some of it, I suspect, is that. Yeah. Uh, some of it is, is. They want to meet Joe Rogan. They need Joe. They want to get to <laughs> Joe somehow. And so you're in there on that. And, and but there's like a. It it feels less. Uh, you guys help me with this if I'm onto something or not. Uh-huh. Uh, it feels less clingy, like like mm, responsible, yeah. less drama. Yes. Is that, is that my in, on anything less there? Committal. Yeah, let's committal, right, exactly. Because they can handle themselves. They know, they get the score here. We can just have sex if that's what they I mean, literally, do. it's like, I, I don't know. I mean, I guys, the younger guys that date me, I remember this one guy was like trying to date me, trying to date me. He's like 28. I just turned 40. And I was like, why are you so, this must be a weird fetish. Like, why do you want to date me so bad? He's like, you never bring up astrology. <laughs> It's like, is that how low the bar is out there? (laughs) He's like, you never blame anything on Mercury being in retrograde. I was like, yeah, I don't even know what that is. You know, I'm like, what is going on with these 22 year olds? Yes. You know, I think mostly if you're dating a 22 year old at this point, you're just like a cinematographer. Like you just have to film them. You have to take pictures of them. That's interesting. You know, not into that at all. Mostly documenting their avocado toast. (laughs) That they're pretending to eat or something. Yeah. Also, like older women, we know how to have set. We know how to give blowjobs without I, I teeth. Think, Even me. Yeah, I think that's a lot of it. Yes. I think that's a lot of yep, it. They, yep. they know what's up. They know what sex is without commitment. If they want commit, maybe you, you know. You can blow a twenty-eight-year-old's mind with just one kegel. <laughs> it's wild. They were like, "What was that?" I'm like, "You don't know what that is." Like, 
You know what I'm saying? It's just wild. I, I know what you're saying. The bar, is, <laughs> <laughs> the bar is so, it's so fun to be able to like blow a guy's mind with like really, I've just laid here the whole time, did one Kegel and like you're proposing. So I think it's that. We know how to give hand jobs without giving you like razor burn. Like yeah. you know all the. Yeah, you know what's up. Yeah, I know what to do with the and circumcised So, so there it is. Stick. So yeah. there, there, there is, I think that's some of it. And I think there's a, hmm, mm. you correct me if I'm wrong on this, everybody. Is there sort of a, Humility a little bit about getting older. You sort of—it's—it's it's not really humbleness, but it's like you know who you are. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean. You know, you—you you know what lighting you don't thrive in. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, Meh. Uh, yeah. You're kind of like, I thought I was a ten. I'm like a six point five. <laughs> like I know, it, uh, maybe as you get older. This is gonna sound weird. I, you know, I was on a plane yesterday watching Curb Your Enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. I started laughing out loud, and I mm -hmm. thought. Oh, I couldn't have done that as a younger person. I would have been too insecure and too it's like, But when you kind of know who you are, you just kind of be yourself. You know? I think it's it's sorry, humility. I was trying to figure out if that was it. I think you're just so tired. <laughs> It's more of just a like, I don't care who you're texting. What am I going to ask you who you're texting? Well, that's the lack of drama stuff. I it, think. And then yes. it's going to yeah. be an ex, which yeah. fine, text her. Yes. Get back with her. I don't... I think, I think you just put the MILF category up a notch like, with this conversation. I, yeah, like, I, think, I think we're going to create I mean, like, what am I... Fall. I pay your phone bill. I'll just cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> but people want to make it like a mommy fetish and stuff. I don't think it's that. I really don't think mm. that's what it is. That's too. I also too think as you it. get older, you realize that you know, like at least as a woman, when guys like check out other girls or have crushes on other girls or follow other girls or watch porn, like it's not a threat to the and relationship. I think, again, this is all stuff. You're building the case. I'm sorry. <laughs> it just it took so long to figure that. Out. Like I thought, yeah. guys would watch porn and be like in love with the porn star. No, 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 no. <laughs> and in I, fact, I, the, th the thing that most women cannot get through their head. What men need visually is not necessarily what they want in a human being. Mm, totally. It's just they just need that for the stimulation for the masturbation and that's It's like taking a piss. Like go jerk off, go whatever you need to do. Like it's it, I used to see it as such a threat because as you said, I was so insecure that I yeah. thought, oh, if you see this other naked woman, you're never gonna want to see me naked again. No. It's just they go they find out, they learn new stuff. I want guys to watch porn. Go learn some new shit. It's getting boring in here. So how far along are you? I'm five months along. So we're heading into that third trimester, which which is God's great trick on humanity because women get very horny during that period. Uh, dude, I've been so horny the okay. entire time I've yeah. been pregnant. No, it I'm, is so wild. I'm wondering if Is it a, like a need to try to abort it last minute? Like <laughs> because I, I, it feels unsafe. It, it can it depends on the pregnancy. Uh -huh. You can usually have sex right up until the end, but get, people get uncomfortable with it. Guys, some guys get turned off by it, don't want to, mm -hmm. and this kind of thing. It's a it's a great and if you Does a, that count as a threesome? Well, this is where men's brains go. <laughs> That's the problem. There, I'm gonna my the baby's gonna see my penis. Is gonna see, see, no, no, everything's nicely closed off. It's gonna be nothing visual or, or anything there. Um, but they, people do get freaked out about it. They get they get all kinds of weird ideas and they get preoccupied about it. Why but, do but you it, think you'd get horny? It's during... Progesterone. It's all. Ah. It's your 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 two things. The placenta is producing all this progesterone, mm. and uh, it you know that's it has androgenic activity. So that's testosterone ultimately doing that to you. Mm. So I would just a, just a note to file away. Later in life, make sure you take testosterone replacement because okay. clearly you're somebody that responds to testosterone and it gets left out of the replacement therapies all the time. Okay, is that blue women, chew? In a little different. Promo code, uh, Dr. Drew. <laughs> a little different. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, um, where was I going? Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, and the other thing is the the weight on the on that region. Yes. We're looking at it here. Yeah, it's it's pushing on the lymphatics and the blood supply and stuff. So it's a constant kind of swelling, and irritation. But the good news, if guys are into me peeing on them, I'll be able to do that involuntarily all the no time. No problem. Isn't that yeah, the it's thing? all part of the I'll action have a fistula. now. So. <laughs> It, it is a weird time when you're like five months in and you're like, there's no chill way for this thing to come out. Like yeah. there's no chill like exit strategy. Have on you this. thought about what you're going to do? I, I don't know. I, it's interesting because all the women I know are like, it doesn't ruin your vagina. It, and then every now and then you'll read an article. It's like, I tore 13 inches. And you're like, it doesn't add up. Okay. So it depends on how it's managed, mm -hmm. right? They should be able to manage it in such a way that there's no tearing. Though sometimes things happen fast and there is a tear. There is always distortion of the architecture. Always. Uh, Distortion I, of the architecture. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you can use that in your act if you want. 
<laughs> essentially, <laughs> they'll it's, just gonna, 3D print me a new uh, pussy. It, it goes. It goes from. I, don't, I want to do it in such a way that you can see it too. Okay, please. I would love. So to. It, it, <laughs> it, it, am I, it goes from this to sort of this. The bottom gets kind of little lax. But there. that's not really the. Oh, Drew, the, Drew, Drew can, can you show it to can, the camera? It, it goes. This, I just disconnected my headphones okay, but, to this. Just a little it, lax at okay, the bottom. Okay, but so if it's like that, wait, stay, stay. <laughs> 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 hold on. Let's do this. Our little finger puppets. Okay, so if yeah. it goes Drew, from to the this, left of you, to, move, to, move it to the left. This there to we this, go. right? Yeah. But that's the outside, like the yes, labial only the fold. Outside. Yes, so the external. So I can just during sex pull up. Ooh, look at you! <laughs> look at that! Just use your hand, and to be stimulated yes, at the same time. Yes, you just pull it up so, and just you know. The point is that is that this is, is what scrunchies are for. I knew this would be a great show with Whitney. <laughs> so, so to uh, to your point, this ton, men don't complain about this because it's more about the inside. Like I, um, they just don't complain about it. It's, yeah, and yeah. when women go back for vaginoplasties and stuff, it's like I want to look like the girls in the picture. Right? They, it's, their husband are going, I, I not me. I, mm -hmm. I don't care. Occasionally, a guy gets weird about it, but mostly it's not the men that bring the women in for the architectural reassignment. Let's say, but <laughs> but but but. but I, when we were uh, pregnant, my wife and I, um, the uh, obstetrician said, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of the vaginal preservation. I'm the president of the Vaginal Preservation Society. He goes, I, I'm a big That's how small my dick is. <laughs> I have done no damage to a vagina. And, he, and, and that, so he was a fan of C-section for that. And I will tell you the, the big problem. So there's really the, the vaginal thing is really not an issue. And I like your attitude about it. It's accurate. Mm. But you will likely get more stress urinary incontinence and a little descending of the bladder and the uterus as you get much older. I do already have a tilted uterus. It doesn't affect that. Oh. It, it, it's as you get much older, there's sort of a descending of everything. I'm going to kill myself and at so like 60, <laughs> 62. You're not. <laughs> and, 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 Someone will. And, like, have you, read my, you, have you read my YouTube comments? <laughs> <laughs> And it changes the sort of direction of the bladder neck and that it's going more towards Mecca, you know. And you, a lot, I know a lot of people that just schedule a cesarean. I'm down for that, but it feels like I don't I don't want to be like wasted when my kid comes out. Like you're I, so, I understand that too. So and there drugs. are I have interviewed um, sort of natural birthing nursing particularly. Mm. And they feel like you miss something hormonally, you miss something bonding wise, like you're worried about. Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, people are pretty fucked up today. Maybe that's something to do with it. I don't know. I, just I don't, don't want to be like on drugs when my that's how I conceived the kid. <laughs> are you okay with pain? I'm pretty good with pain. Yeah. Let's let the on drugs settle in. That's yeah, another, see, another I, good I, comment. But I don't know. I'm not doing the baby in the bathtub at home thing. Yeah, I, I will be in the. I just want it to be like you know. It's way worse than you imagine. That's not <laughs> glorious and beautiful. If you didn't already know, our friends at Manscaped now sell beard products. Yep, that's right. The leaders in below-the-waist grooming changed the game with their Beard Hedger Pro Kit, and now they're going a step further with their brand-new Handyman. It's an electric face shaver for a quick, convenient way to achieve a clean-shaven look. Whether you're looking to sharpen up your neckline or give your face a smooth finish, the Handyman has you covered. Go to manscaped.com, use code AFTERDARK for 20% off and free shipping. I love Manscaped products because they think of everything. I Trust me, they are the highest quality and they're exactly what you want. That's a juggernaut for fixing faces. First off, this cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 hair cutting lengths all with one guard. So no more messy drawers full of extra add-ons or you know hair going everywhere. That's right, face grooming doesn't need to be hard. Get 20 different beard lengths in just one guard. The Beard Hedger is a high-tech piece of art in a travel size package with long-lasting battery, universal charging, strong motor, and like everything at Manscaped, it charges quickly, lasts a long time, you're gonna be happy. They think of everything. Your face is your first impression and your beard is often an important accessory. Make sure you have the right tool for the job with Beard Hedger. So you get 20% off and free shipping with the code AFTERDARK at manscaped.com. That is 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use that code after dark. Take a quick second to thank our sponsor for today's show. It's his sheath underwear. Sheath makes the most comfortable boxers. It uh, box, if you're sick of boxers that are too loose or briefs that are too tight, sheath is for you. 
They're the best. You get one pair, and it's going to change your life. The most comfortable boxer briefs you'll ever wear. Stretchy fabric is made with moisture-wicking technology. Soft, keeps everything cool. Sheath is particularly useful during these summer months and while working out. The most unique thing about Sheath is that dual pouch, right? I was a little skeptical about that pouch, but I, I use it now. And if uh, you're not into that idea, you don't have to use it. You can just wear them like a regular pair of underwear. They will be the most comfortable pair of boxer briefs you have ever worn. Plus, they have brand new materials like bamboo and mesh for even more cooling. I love sheath. I wore them while we traveled, and they were amazing. And I used the pouch while we traveled. Here's what I want you to do. Go to sheathunderwear.com and get the most comfortable underwear you will ever wear. If you use the promo code after dark, you'll also get 20% off your order. That is sheath underwear. One word, sheathunderwear.com, promo code after dark for 20% off your order. Can I ask you yeah. if this was a waste of money and if I was conned? There was a, there's a doctor in LA or a bunch of dermatologists that have, you know, Alfera is a laser that yeah. I do and yeah. it's, it heats up the. Titans your, things. Yes, exactly. Is it and the it's blue not, laser? Is it it's, the... it's, it's, it's really deep. It's okay. like uh, you have to, you know, they give you like a little bit of anesthesia yeah. and it heats up the subdermal layer so yes. much that it traumatizes it and then creates scar tissue and yeah. kind of tightens it. Yeah. Right. So the idea is you never have to get a face mm. up to work. Mm. And um, you've seen the trajectory of most female comedians faces. So <laughs> I'm going to try to like just get ahead of it. And so uh, they had a vaginal one that was like a wand that did like laser of the yeah. vagina. The, the laser of the vagina. I did it like six times. Oh, it's it's an it's not it's not a cutting laser. Mm -mm. It was oh. like a thermal yeah. like thermage yeah. type of thing. That That's okay. To it. The, the the problem with all that stuff is you can inadvertently trigger some scarring. That's and, good though. That tightens, right? Mm, or then hardens. it tears and scars and tears and scars and, and then oh. it starts to really shrink and then you get into trouble. A lot but of pain. you want, but it shrinks. You get the pain. But pain. I do sometimes get pain during sex. Mm. 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 Okay. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so childbirth is gonna be a nightmare. Uh, well, no matter what, that's true, right? Okay, okay. <clears throat> it's it's rough. It's rough. Okay, let All me right. plug myself back in here. I have no idea, guys. I may need your help. Sending in, no Chad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Oh, sorry. So, there we got it. <laughs> there we <are. laughs> okay, I'm good. Thank you. Just like that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's no, it just do the do the this and then that, okay. that and that. It's okay. it's this lower pole that kind of gets stretched out, right? And it's no, it's not, it's not where the action is. Have you ever heard of light bulb <laughs> pussy? <laughs> it's where like you, because my vagina inside is very tight, like or it's you know. And because uh, I had a whole thing when IUD like got lost, it was a whole thing. But I guess there's this thing called light bulb pussy where guys will say they'll have sex with a girl and it'll be like sort of tight in the entry. And then it's like there's space. In, yeah. It's like a light bulb. Yeah, yeah. You know, you want it to be like the other way. Yeah. I, I would imagine. OK. <laughs> and, and <laughs> I, I, I would curious. imagine guys that notice that sort of have a little bit of delayed ejaculation already and so they need very specific they stimulation. They have Russian doll dick. Yes, right. Okay. Yeah, they yeah, they have nesting doll dick. <laughs> That's what we call it. Let's uh speaking of vagina, let's let me read you an email real quick yeah. here. My wife has been having weird feelings for the last 18 months in her vaginal region. She says it only happens when she lays down at night, uh -huh. similar to a restless leg syndrome. The title of this is restless vag syndrome. Uh, -huh. uh except it needs to stim no, wait. Similar to restless sex term, except it's a need to stimulate herself. So she's becoming a man. She <laughs> says it's not sexual, just a way to find relief for this uncontrollable urge. I do help her out as much as possible, but it's still very uncomfortable. She's 44, three kids, a bit overweight, takes medication for depression. That's what it is. Mm. Uh, but the situation started well before she started taking the meds. Mm. Well, that's interesting. Uh, so, so <laughs> he thinks... Do you know what I mean? I don't yeah. know. You don't become a reliable narrator on that stuff, I feel that, like. That's true. The history, you, because you, you put it, memories are not, memories are very flawed. Mm -hmm. They're reconstructions. Yeah. They're not film. They're not a Totally. A, a and I've VCR. been, I went on antidepressant one, <clears throat> depressants once and I had no concept of time. Like I felt like I was so groggy. I was so out of touch with my body. Like I, like it was just like coming was impossible. Like I feel like I couldn't tell what was pre- antidepressants what's after and then they say oh well it takes six months to kick in so it's yeah. just kind of hard so i guess her problem is that she's a woman and they lie <laughs> could be that uh <laughs> but but i it uh, it's so she's having what's called persistent sexual arousal uh, okay. and that can go all the way to the point of having persistent recurrent orgasms 
Huh. And women, <clears throat> well, men look at that and go, oh, give me that. Yeah. Women, when it actually happens to them, it's very uncomfortable. It but starts to get kind of painful. It's like blue balls for women or something? No, because, well, now it's sort of blue ball but it can go all the way to re, re, rep, repetitive orgasm. Right, right. It's like one after the other all day long. Sounds you awful. Your day. I know, right? It's not but, so bad, but it ends up being uncomfortable. Yeah, but so hold on. But he said, did he say it's not sexual? Oh, she only happens when she lays down at it, night. So you wonder if there's something, and she's overweight too. So you wonder if there's some sort of stretch on the. So this is all spinal mechanisms, these arousal mechanisms, mm. and where there's something's triggering on the spine. Yeah. I mean, I would actually see her gynecologist because sometimes tumors and things like that can do weird shit like this. But I, I doubt it. it's just one of these things. And I would blame the medication first, even though her history doesn't suggest that. All right. So this, listen, I want to, we're going to take some calls. Now you ready for that? Uh, yeah, sure. Put your headphones on there. Oh, yeah. And this is uh, the other side of the equation as it pertains to the weird sexual side effects of SS, of antidepressants. You mentioned it just a second ago. Yeah. This is uh, John from San Diego. John, go ahead. Hey, um, yeah, so I started taking sertraline about a year ago, and I was only on it for three months, and it was to treat um, premature ejaculation. Oh, interesting. But I stopped it after three months. Go ahead. It's just so interesting to me that you did it for a sexual thing, and now you have a sexual problem as a result, so keep keep going. Yeah, the irony is not lost on me. <laughs> um, so uh, basically, by the end of those three months, my sexual desire, like, evaporated it was gone completely um but the effects on anxiety i really liked it lowered my anxiety quite a bit so they put me on buspirone um it helped my anxiety quite a bit and i've got back some of my like um sexual function but i'm still just like not horny like i'm horny like once a week and prior to sertraline i needed a regular milking um <laughs> pretty regularly <laughs> hang on so, hold on whitney just threw up hold on a second <laughs> get, get that male brain kicked back in there, Whitney. I know you can sorry, do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> you're the one that just said it's just like peeing or anything else. I'm so it's, sorry. Milking is just wor way worse. But I, I, I know what you mean, John. I get you. you he misses it too. It, he's it's he says that with a great deal of longing and grief. It was just the I think the regular milking. <laughs> I think that the regular part got me. I'm calling HR. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so, you know, he, here's one thing. You know, the bu Buspirone, uh, hang on a second. I'm, I always get it confused. Is that, is that bu Buspar or is that Buspar, right? Yeah, that's Buspar. Yeah, that has some serotonergic activity. If you're very sensitive to that, it might still be that, right? So if you're worried okay. about restoring your libido, your sexual drive, I, I would talk to the doctor about whether that boost bar should be continued or not. The big problem with these SSRIs is a certain percentage of people who have this shutdown in libido and sexual functioning have it permanently after the SSRI. Mm. So most, 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 the vast majority, it all comes back. But occasionally it persists. Same thing from birth control pills. The high progesterone birth control pills, When if you're one of those people that, you know, that drops your desire... About ten percent of those will have permanent decrease in libido. Can I ask you a question? What is what's so wrong with premature ejaculation? How how premature is it? We tend to take it as a compliment. So I'm curious. Just it seems like something that really plagues men. John, go ahead. Let's hear your story. Um. Yeah. It, it's you know it, it could be usually it's, it's at the very beginning of the partner, but it could be. Could you just date uglier like women? <laughs> two to three. Two to three pumps. You know? Two or three pumps, um, so immediate. It's like immediate. Is there any way yeah. to work it up like a muscle? Like, do you watch a lot of porn? No judgment. Um, I, I used to, um, and I thought that that would help. And mm. I've tried, you know, different Kegel exercises and breathing exercises. But uh, at the end of the day, I think it's just it was tied to like anxiety. Isn't there a numbing? Um, a nu and Roman swipes promo code th Whitney. Th there is a there is a numbing oh, yeah, cream. Yeah. I mean, I I, I use. Uh, numbing condoms for the most part. I um, did, by the way, suck a guy's dick once help. after he used Roman swipes, and it was a bummer. Your, your mouth got numb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Couldn't swallow yeah. for a week. It was a weird night. Um, like, could you have told me about this? Yeah. So, so the the numbing condom he mentioned that's actually the most effective way to do it, and it did it help. It, it helps a little bit, but it also makes sex uh, completely unenjoyable. Oh, that's it's interesting. Like, Can you do other um, things yeah, besides just well, penetration? Well, what about milking it before you go into action? <laughs> It, that kind of helps um, a little bit too, um, but sometimes it, it it's not consistent. Um, what what I find with guys, John, with guys like you that are really uh, rapid triggered, you have to do it almost twice. 
Mm. And, and then the problem is then you don't come at all the third time. Right. And so you're kind of, you're, yeah. you're, you got to go one or the other. And maybe the trick is to sort of do it the second time with the partner, maybe not with penetration, as Whitney is saying, and then save the penetration for when you want to be King Kong later. Um, and, and a lot yeah. of this is male ego and again, porn and stuff. We want to do that to a woman, what well, we're seeing. A lot that. of it I feel like is psychological. I don't know because I see men just tearing themselves up over. I do, even if a guy does it for 40 minutes and comes, he's like, sorry, that was too fast. Like I just see there must be something that's Th like. That's in our head. It's yeah. completely in our head. And you have, as women, if you could be explicit about, well, the problem is. Us no, explicit? Well, no. <laughs> no the problem is women are all over the fucking place. And yeah. so some women need that 40 minutes and want that 40 minutes and sort of get, mm -hmm. get crestfallen and are disappointed if you didn't do that. And the guy only needs one of those yeah. and he's through. Then he's going to freak out about it forever. Yeah, it's just, I think it's just like a lot of like uh, uh, embarrassment comes into play. Like the fear of embarrassment of like, oh, you came too fast. Were you thinking about someone else? Or you came too late? Like, why or am I not hot enough? Like there's just always a that, lot of these like psychological things. That women do to themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. Uh, but mostly my experience has been they take it as a compliment. Yeah, yeah. The, Agreed. Because there's and, also toys. Like there's other stuff you can do with her so she's getting off. And then you can take the pressure away of, oh, I have to get her off before I come or whatever. It's, it's. That it is, you're operating. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I explained to Whitney. I've had this cough since H1N1 in the morning. We're doing a morning show here today. He's allergic to me. I, oh, there's that too. Uh, but that your experience, your how we are so unidirectional, linear in our sexual experience, and you guys are sort of holistic and having a much bigger experience. That, that it's hard for us to adjust. I'm just trying to figure out your credit score. <laughs> yeah, there's that, it, but it's hard for us to figure out what really makes you happy and that's and we we invest a lot in that most yeah. of us not all but most of us want that right right we want you to be happy but if you take the pressure off of oh i came too fast now she's not going to come if you like if she comes first either in many other ways you go down on her i don't know that doesn't really work for me that seems exhausting well um, a lot of women need that that yeah. they, they prefer that yeah they or that. you know or like using a toy or something like that. so the pressure is now off she's mm. already come and then I don't know. Is that part of it? Feeling like she's not going to finish because you did so quickly? Definitely. But my girl, my current girlfriend, like doesn't come at all anymore. So there's actually zero pressure. Um, but I still go down on her and try to make things as a Why as doesn't possible. is she on medicine too? No, she's not. Um, she's just never been able to come through. Um, you know, intercourse. She's made herself come after like masturbating for forty-five minutes or something like that. So oh, she just has a difficult time with it. I don't know why. That's yeah. psychological. I mean, there. Or, or she on birth control pills? That'll do that too. Mm. Um, she uses NuvaRing. Even the new, oh. <clears throat> the NuvaRing. Uh, I'm trying to remember if that has a progesterone impregnated. The mm. Marina is the oh NuvaRing. Yeah, that's a that's a well. Yeah, I mean, there's a certain amount of stuff she might get exposed to there. If I remember right, I gotta look it up. God damn it! Is that the only ring you've gotten her? Maybe that's yeah, the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe get her a ring, ring. Uh, that's interesting. It's I only mean, been a couple months. I know for me, when I can't, I also I'm gonna say something crazy. Like, is there something you guys can do together? Like. I, the guy that I was just dating, like we would like watch porn. We would like watch stuff. Like, yeah. I don't know, smoke some weed, like have a glass of like, cause so much of the like pressure on like, I have to come and he's going to come fast. And like so much of it to me gets psychological. It shuts your brain down. I can't have an orgasm unless I'm taking really like serious deep breaths and I'm really relaxed and not thinking about the other person's experience. And, uh, and it seems like you guys have like a lot of pressure right so, now. So just saying that you're not thinking about the other person's experience is odd to us and I think takes some heat off us too to know that you guys like, do that like let me just be able to like f like t deactivate my amygdala because there's yeah. so much of like I'm trying to look thin I'm trying to be hot yeah. I'm trying to like impress him I'm no, trying to get thing, him we're off. just like Wah. we're into what's happening I think we're both obsessing over the other person's experience when bit. to be able to be like a little bit selfish and just go okay like let me light out because also when you're masturbating there's a lot I mean this is gonna there's like folds there's thing you got to get your bearings you got to make sure your hands not too slippery sli there's just like a lot and then i think for i will if i've been trying to give myself an orgasm for too long i'm like oh, this is taking too long yeah. like he's gonna think it's him you know yeah, i think we yeah. have the same stuff that you guys do maybe it, just can you guys just smoke some weed what <laughs> what state are you in <laughs> I, that the nuva ring does have a ton of hormone I, i'm not remembering what's on there and be careful that may be what's causing her lack of sexual functioning too so 
All right, my friend. Oh, how do we do this? Hold on a second. Return to queue. There we go. Uh, we got a bunch of calls here coming. I'm trying to get you guys. It's heartbreaking. Uh, uh, it, it's common though, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's just. And what I what drives me out of my fucking mind is that so much of it is stuff that me and my peers are prescribing, mm. and it's ruining. It ruins relationships, and that's the last thing they think about. Yeah, I mean, the birth control thing for me was wild. I didn't learn until having taken birth control for like eight years, the person that you're attracted to when you're on birth control is different than the person when you're off birth control. There's that. Because of the way that you smell pheromones or whatever. So they say that when you get married and get, like, don't get married until you've gone off birth control and been with the person for a year and make sure you're still compatible and attracted to them. And, <laughs> don't you guys don't use that an excuse to be like okay i were engaged but we can't get married until you've been off birth control for a year just to make sure just, I'm the it's wrong not guy. a way to stall it's not a way to stall but but it, it it back to your point about there being a lot going on the thing that screws up men more than anything else is how different women are one from the other mm-hmm. and so we you know we get going when we're young with somebody and we think ah oh, we got to figure it out yeah. and the next one's totally different i know it's always it's always a trip when you have uh, sex with a guy for the first time and he just goes into his, his whack-a-mole his, thing his. and you're like all right now i know exactly how your ex comes i know more about this woman than i will ever need to know they just come in they just like Suck their thumb, like do some weird shit with your nipples. Yeah. You're like, okay. Well, let's let's talk about now, that a little bit. Now so, we have to start from scratch. Well, do would you prefer? This, I think this is a little tutorial for men. Mm-hmm. Would you prefer the guy goes what? It, men are afraid to ask. Mm-hmm. Let me put it this way: What turns you on? What do you like? Because we they have, will undoubtedly have been around women who is, who either get uncomfortable with that mm-hmm. or say it spoils it if you do that. I agree. That to me makes it a little too clinical. It makes it a little. So too what are we planned. supposed to do? I want a guy that's just going to take control and take charge and do what he did I, to his ex. I like really, but <laughs> I like really dominant. I can just I think with positive reinforcement and just ignoring something you don't like, you'll get better results. Like to be like I don't like that or that didn't work or to get weird. Like I think it's hot when a guy just like goes in, does his thing, and then you can just use body language to let him know what you are and are not into okay, okay. you know yeah 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 but well, it's that's... also it's like the first time you're having sex it's not and it's also not about like what i'm into like i'm into different things with different guys so like oh, i'm that, not into that's mind-boggling y- yeah. you know it's yes, like okay. if you're into hair pulling like like i like my hair pulled and if it's a guy that's gonna do it too hard or too weak or make me act that's the worst or the wrong guy doing it i like it. being choked but when a guy does it so lightly that i have to like <laughs> i have to like <laughs> Do a sit up to get it, or I have to like uh, like pretend it's you know just if you're gonna do it, do it. <laughs> Don't if you're scared. And then one time I did, tell, I was dating a veterinarian, medical person, and uh, and he, I think he was again dating younger girls. If you've dated a guy after they dated a younger girl, they're terrified to do anything. Yes, they're like especially you, nowadays. They're like, do you consent to this? They're like yeah. filming on the yeah. ring camera. Yes, the only a, have, sign here, sign here. <laughs> guys not really are into having sex well, outside. For Lingus, I have this form here. <laughs> when guys want to have sex outside, it's because they want to get on the ring camera. Oh, <laughs> like they want proof of everything. Oh, and my. so I remember he was like kind of like casual. I was like, I, I kind of like used his hand and like moved it up towards my throat. And then he choked me like a doctor would. He went, Bleh. oh, like with. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> like he just yeah. went straight to the esophagus. And I was like, oh, right. no, that's that's not. Well, that's you, like you know why he did that? Why? Because sometimes if you do it just hard enough, you'll cut the carotids off and stroke out. Oh. And, that, and so he so was. So the guys before have actually been trying to kill me. They've been wanting to kill you. <laughs> yes. I think like I, you know, I, again, I. And I'm, by the way, that happens. People die. Oh man. It happens. Way more. Not a lot, but. More than you'd like to know, I'm like sure. in like auto or the auto erotic kind. No, or the auto erotic happens a lot because okay. the way the way that happens, they they take a belt or something, they secure it, they lean into it, and if they lose consciousness, they stay leaned in, and now it's over. Duh. With the like David Carradine, that happened too, right? And uh, a, a lot of people that some whenever they whenever you see the police behaving weirdly, like in other countries especially, mm-hmm. for sure it's autoerotic asphyxiation. Whoa. When there's no letter, and somebody, particularly if somebody was a heroin addict, because sure. they have, they need that to, when people have opioid addiction, they don't get the same satisfaction from sex. They have to do They're things. They're desensitized Yeah, they to have to it. do extreme things. Is there a way to get that without hanging yourself in a closet by a belt? Yes, but but again, they, they it, it's extreme in all respects, yeah. and so you can get you. They don't want to hurt other people. It must be right? great. I can only get off if I'm dying. 
if I'm close to Tim having the white <laughs> light. Yeah, that's what that's what they're going that's for. Punk rock. Yeah, and so this in the hands of somebody else on mm. you, if the person is aggressive, mm-hmm. like doesn't isn't really like let's say you're both drunk. Okay. That's how it goes bad. Okay, got it, got it, got yeah, it. Yeah, so be careful. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, I like a little aggressive. I I I, de- I definitely don't like trepidatious. I definitely I'd rather you just like go for it because I I assume the first couple months we have sex we're still figuring each other out. Yes. You know what I mean? There's yes. gonna be stuff I'm into with you that I wasn't into with the last person and then well, well that's already information because I don't think most case. guys I was not really aware that women are so different guy to guy that's, yeah that's an odd you just thing have to, to like read each other mm. you know what I mean it's like you have to figure out what your chemistry is I mm. feel like you well know? the guy is pretty much always the same <laughs> they, they, I mean if he's doing something unusual it's because he learned it from his other partner yeah he's doing it because he thinks that's what you want yeah but and the other thing about men is they will they will let you know early what their yeah. preferences are and things interesting they will just bring you into their they have they have a hot fudge sunday in mind and yeah. that's what they want and they put yeah you- i the, my only off limit the only things that haven't worked for me are the fish hook what's that the fish hook when the guy's behind you and it and oh they pick. <laughs> but is that with two is that with two hands it's like yeah uh, two fingers no good that's not it's funny. like a like this guy no bueno like i just i, I just By don't way, know we're, we're gonna show this video to your son <laughs> <laughs> when he's 14 that's how you got made son <laughs> Uh, there was a hand in the... I think sometimes guys get confused. I think if you're watching too much porn and you see a guy yeah. kind of trying to figure, like put all the, the inputs together and it just turns into like a mess. And I'm like, okay, dude, let's time out. I don't think you even know what your plan Do is Do you here. stop them when, they, when that happens? Well, only one time because I did start <laughs> laughing. Like oh. if it, 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 sh- it shouldn't be f- hilarious how <laughs> like confused you are and how many... Because I think a lot of times guys will watch porn and they'll try to do all the things. Yeah. So I'm like, dude, we'll do the next one tomorrow and we'll do the next one this weekend. We can't get them all done tonight and he put his hand in my mouth and just like left it there it wasn't like a gag it was just like oh i think maybe he was worried i was gonna talk (laughs) or Or maybe you had been talking i know (laughs) (laughs) i like a mouth cover i like a you know i like an aggressive guy who knows how to do it without it killing you yeah or, and without being awkward and weird yeah yeah I get yes it, it can't feel forced yeah, i get it all right here's a interesting uh sort of medical issue as it pertains to sex and sexuality james james down in florida what's up man hey mommy thanks for taking my call you hey, betcha hi have at it so uh, about two months ago two months ago i uh had a sexual encounter with a woman who was turns out to be a stripper and i ate her ass a little bit and I think I might have gotten hepatitis because I've got this pain in my uh, upper right abdomen that's been persisting for about two months. Uh, it did go away after about six weeks, but then I drank a bit over the 4th of July weekend and the pain came back. Well, uh, interesting hypothesis. I like, the, I like, I like where your, how your brain works. It's like uh, hepatitis A is an oral fecal transmitted uh, illness. It's one of the things you could get from eating ass. Very unusual in this country. Were you in this country? Yeah, yeah. Florida. Okay. So it would be unlikely or here. Or Florida. That's, Go, a, that's he's in different. Florida, yeah. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> close enough to trouble. Yeah, that's different. That's different, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you've not had the hepatitis A vaccine? I'm not sure exactly. It, it wasn't something I wanted to like ask my mom about. If my mom <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. Did you, you know asking? I was going to grow what, up to eat ass, why mom? Why is that coming to mind? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, good for you for eating ass. Can I? Can I? That is actually the one thing I'm sort of weird about. Did she ask for that, or is that your thing? Uh no, it is my thing. Wow, good for you. I I I. Uh, let's let's intro. Well, let's introduce <laughs> Whitney after we finish this call. Maybe in, no. You know who I'm thinking of, right? Just a, just one of his videos. I yeah, think yeah, would impress yeah, her. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um. So here's the deal. Uh. I doubt that's what this is. Hepatitis A is jaundice, fever. You're sick. It's bad. Mm. But uh, I don't have any of that. No, I understand. And, and but you do need to get this evaluated. And hepatitis is a very simple thing to sort of screen for. Your your liver enzymes are elevated. It's an inflammation of the liver. It's you got hep- you, the liver enzymes are up. Um, but right upper quadrant pain is something that does need evaluation. It might be gallbladder. Have you lost weight recently? 
Uh, no, not okay. well. I am losing weight now, but the pain. No, he's on a diet. It. He only eats ass. That's he's true. He's, <laughs> he's ass. in ketosis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a, a nice twist on ketosis there. <laughs> uh, so you know, you should see a doctor to get this value. I doubt it's hepatitis. Interesting thought. Um, I can't think, you know, there's Delta and other kind of weird hepatitis, hepatitis is out there. Where is it? Where's the pain? He's right upper quadrant. So it can't be... Uh, so liver's right it here. It can't be you know? pancreas. Oh. It could be a lot of things. Mm. And yeah, it it's like no- three fingers below my ribs. Yeah, I mean, probably nothing, frankly. Mm-hmm. He's probably just obsessing about it. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. He's, but, but it But it is something that requires evaluation. What you would get is a basic blood test and an ultrasound. Do you have health insurance? I do actually really good yeah, health insurance. Just get it done. Hey, if you're it, eating strippers asses, you doctor. better have that blue cross blue shield. You, when, when you see the doctor, <laughs> I do. That is what I <laughs> <Damn>. have. <laughs> when you see the doctor, you just you don't have to get into the details if you don't want. Just say, I think I might have been exposed. Yeah, to hepatitis. don't. Maybe don't. Like, oh. Yeah, I think I might have exposed to hepatitis. <laughs> I've had some pain ever since. Um, maybe I'm obsessing, but could you evaluate? That's it. Okay. All right. All right, enough. buddy. Let it's us know. AIDS. Call back. Let me know how it went. What's that? It's AIDS. Yeah. No. No. I'm no, kidding. No, no, Come no, on. Uh, <laughs> ooh, oh God, some of these people. Uh oh. Uh, okay, this is for you, Whitney, specifically. This Uh-oh. is a Roland from New Jersey. Roland, you have a question for Whitney? Yes, sir. How you doing? We're good. What's up? Good. So I got a question. It's not a hot take. I feel stupid even asking this. But um, so I had a question for Whitney. Go ahead. Yes, sir. So, please. But give us a little. We need a little breather here. Please give us give us a, a, a okay, okay. clean our palate. So, um, Whitney, if you could bring back a deceased comedian, who would you bring back, and why should it be Bernie Mac? <laughs> <laughs> if I could bring and, back and, and Drew, you Drew, you can answer this as well. Oh, I, I know who I'd bring. I, I'm I'm obs- I was obsessed as a kid with Richard Pryor. Oh, oh yeah. gosh! I was yeah. thinking more recently, like yeah. Friends. Like I was thinking Greg Giraldo and Bob Saget and Gilbert Godfrey. I mean, all. I mean, there's oh. so many. Uh, Chris Farley. I mean, um, yeah, obviously Richard Pryor, George Carlin. I mean, there's a lot. And also, we might. There's the hologram technology just started. Like I did this roast on OnlyFans TV, oh, and we did a hologram of uh, Tom Segura. Actually, so they're working what? on with ChatGPT. They're able to put in, like Rodney Dangerfield is the one they're working on right now, where they're oh. putting all of his material into the chat GPT, so you'll be able to have conversations with them, they'll be oh able to do stand-up, God. and there'll be a hologram. I mean, there's a Whitney Houston hologram in Vegas right now, and it's not there yet. It's, it, it's, does it appear on the stage? I, yeah, that oh one's my spooky. Goodness. It's very spooky. Woo. But the ones like that we did, like you guys saw it with uh, with Tom Segura, like they're really able to render it. And, I mean, it's not going to be the same, but you know. Well, one day. Mm-hmm. It's, it's pretty trippy. Wow. I Love Tom. I love Tom and, and the whole YMH uh, podcast. Tom doesn't. Tom doesn't deserve a hologram. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Christina does, though. Christina needs one. <laughs> Christina does. Yeah, yeah. 100% Christina. Yeah. Does. Yeah. 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 She wants him to start fucking her hologram instead of putting her through this. But it's an interesting question. Is there somebody <laughs> that? And we said, what is Bernie Mac? Are you, are you oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, Bernie Mac. I mean, I think of Mitch Hedberg. I, I tend to think of the ones that died oh, really Hedberg, early. Yes. You know. Um, and uh, God, Patrice O'Neill. Um, there's, I mean, a, a lot of the really brilliant. Bro- this I've is just making me think I'm going to die soon. No. Nah. A lot of the really brilliant ones were suicide. Yeah, so, and and I mean, it's I think part of what you know, Dr. Drew doing is so important. I mean, I'm sure you've you've probably saved a couple of comedians. In I have your talked day. to a few, yeah. But there's yeah. just like a lot. It's interesting. In fact, the ones I didn't save, I was like, yeah, there were a couple of them I was sort of adjacent to, and I was like. They're bipolar. We could have easily dealt mm. with that. You know, I, I could see it. I could see what it was. Brody you know? Stevens, um, you know, is Brody is the one that ugh. kills. Uh, it just destroys me. Yeah. You know, and he stopped taking his medication, and Correct. you know the thing, and started to be, you know, serious. But it made me wonder. Uh, you know, when someone that's dealing with that kind of, you know, whether it was schizophrenia, depression, whatever, he his was, was bipolar. Bipolar. He went and he got a new medication, and they just send people home to be like now. A bipolar person is responsible for managing their own medication. I kind of was like, why isn't there some law where like someone has to check on them every day or make sure they're taking it? Because he basically just like kind of stopped taking it. In, in fact, it's it's quite the the laws are quite the opposite. Mm. You're not allowed to ask people to do too much. 
Mm. It's 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 fucked up right now. In fact, I'm giving a talk tomorrow. That's mm. why I'm here. One of the reasons I'm in Austin right now is to give a talk about this issue. Mm. And the laws interfere with doctors' ability to do these things. You want to be able to put a conservatorship on some yeah. people. You can't do things like that. You can't. Do it's it. just tricky because I look at like you know the the guys that were you know overdosing from cocaine or had heart attacks and stuff like that. And although I see less ish cocaine use, even though the fentanyl thing, you have one shot. We have one. Mis- you can make one mistake. It seems like with the fentanyl stuff. Now we lost a couple comedians like two years ago to fentanyl from cocaine and my brain is like well if you're doing cocaine at 45 you're gonna probably die anyway of something you know yeah but now it's moving into these other things and not that i'm not like supportive of these like the microdosing of mushrooms i'm sure it's a miracle but like doing it every day and losing track it, it is it may be a it, there's no such thing as a medicine that doesn't hurt can mm. have the potential to hurt you and until we understand what that potential is yeah. and what the dosing range is or what the duration is before it's harmful, yeah. you can't, we're charged with do no harm. Yep. It's our number one priority. And yes, these things will be useful. I'm no doubt about it. And but we're also very vulnerable, but, you know, population already, as you see by the number of, you know, people that die in my field and smoking weed. And now Kratom is just casually being used. Which is an opiate. And you're like, I'm sure there was a time where, you know, wine was like, oh, this is no problem. And now we know people die from it. So I kind Cigarettes. of. Cigarettes. Cigarettes good example i've been around long enough to go like oh this thing that's kind of a cute plant medicine who knows in the next 20 years whether it's like i took the weird mushrooms i, I promise you there will be i've seen i've worked in a psychiatric household for mm-hmm. 35 years I, I saw so much stuff from chemicals so much that it, the brain is a very delicate instrument. Protect mm. it, protect it, protect it. And the amount we're taking, it's like, I'm on Wellbutrin, I'm on Lexapro, right. and now I'm doing the, uh, mushrooms, now I'm taking it that, edible. I'm it's circumspect like, about all that. We don't have any research on what they all mix together as, so. And, and, and there are medical managements, but you sometimes a lot of medicine is necessary, but then you bring it down as quickly mm-hmm. as possible. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, Roland, see, you got us in some good stuff there. Thanks, man. All right, buddy, see you soon. Uh, we Aww. have a little uh, ass-eating video for Whitney just <laughs> to kind of keep her happy. An ass-eating video. Well, I'd literally I, I, rather I, I, talk I, about my dead friends for longer. No, no, you'll love this And guy. I didn't say Norm MacDonald. Oh, Norm. Mm. Mm. God, it's, you, you're wistful when you think about how many people it's, are not it's, it's like... It's, I'm play with your booty in your kitty cat, but I'm going to put my hand in it, and I'm going to smell it. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. <laughs> I'm going to play with your booty. One love. You think it's a game? <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna play with you, my baby. I'm gonna put my hand in your kitty cat. No, in your pants. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna smell it. Oh, I'm the, gonna the, smell it. You, you know why? Why? If you're clean, you're clean. If you're dirty, you're dirty. I'm gonna let it be known. I'm gonna let it be known with my hand. <laughs> <laughs> the toes. The toes. Yeah. But if it smells good, I'm going to tell you. I yeah, my baby. One more time. <laughs> Let me put my nose in the place. Okay? I yeah. So we just. I changed my mind. You guys. Yeah. I love fentanyl. This is awesome. <laughs> we uh, just for. I just call him my I yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
a guy uh, was like licking, I don't know what he was doing, licking my boob or trying to like went to lick my armpit, I guess. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. Uh. And he, I, I had deodorant on, like oh, yeah. old school secret, like carcinogenic, like hardcore, and yeah. allegedly. And he licked it and he went, oh. like I watched him like do that. And I was like, oh God, like I didn't even think about that. You know, I remember when I first moved to LA, there was this girl that everyone was in love with. She was this actress, she was in love with all, and I had dated a guy that used to date her and he was still heartbroken about her. And when I met her in person for the first time, I was like, hey, so you're so-and-so, like you're like the heartbreaker of LA. Like I was just being sort of facetious, not like mean girly. And I said, I was like, so what's your deal? Why is everyone so in love with you? And she went, I put cherry chapstick on my pussy oh. <laughs> so there was a time I would put that on my pussy uh. and butthole <laughs> and it actually really works because they there's also a nostalgic thing where they like smell their childhood or something you know there's some but <laughs> just, it works I'm just saying I, if, well, we, I don't argue with success none of the don't, wipes do not, do like argue. all that stuff like that's no good but cherry chapstick cherry chapstick I, I, guys are way less into and we're so weird mm. uh, the specifics like that mm. than you imagine but I think and it's yet, something you wouldn't notice you just think maybe, she's maybe. like a flower yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> and yet right we do like that yeah. and, and yet at the same time we're extremely focused on very specific body parts it's very weird how mm -hmm. our brain works it, is a lot of that like um, conditioning to no it's just how it works Interesting. it's just the way it, 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 well there's conditioning in the sense that those preferences for all that get dialed in around age 14. Mm. And some of those preferences, I'm convinced, are due to whatever kind of intense imagery adolescents are exposed to. Right. It sort of determines some of those preferences. Mm -hmm. God only knows now with all the pornography and everything they're seeing how this works. Oof. Back in the day, Playboy provided that, right? right. And so they, the guys would kind of zero in on their things they liked. And yeah. That's what they like. You know what's interesting? The younger guys, I'm glad you're bringing them up. Younger guys, I don't know what this is, but prefer pubes. Maybe too much total shaving down there. I don't know. but Or maybe it's just like a reaction to like, if yeah. you're seeing so many bald vaginas yes, in porn, yes. by the, like now there's something taboo about like hair. And, and bald also is kind of, yeah, you know, yeah, childy, a little, it's like mm. a little, or chemo y. Ooh. Like, you know, there's a lot of different radiation, I, yeah. I, I'm definitely not, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sort of Chernobyl pussy. <laughs> I'm kind of not into the super shaved guy thing either. I think uh, guys think that they have to do that, uh, but but don't you think that it's good that guys are finally grooming? I mean, women have groomed since the Egyptian times. Mm -hmm. There are depilatories in the pyramids, mm. right? I, I think you just have to either be consistent about it or don't go too close because right. you get the razor burn. I don't know if it's a herpy or not. And then I have rug burn. Like you got to just, I like enough but that's to different. That's shaving and grooming are two different things, right? Right. Okay, You yes. brought up Manscaped. Okay, we so were, promo we were, code waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that, I just, guys sometimes shave against the grain yeah. and then they just have a bunch of red bumps. No, and no, like, no. Mm -hmm. Shaving is a different thing. Mm -hmm. Shaving is different. Right. Grooming is like just getting it under control. A sure, bit. sure, sure. I think that's just basic sensible. Self respect. Yes. Interesting. That's why there's manscaped. It's a lot. I think it's different. Yeah, I don't know. Like the same thing the way like different guys are into different things, All you know, it's sort of like. Promo code like, after dark, by the way. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, promo <laughs> <from, laughs> code waiting. Promo code waiting. I think also though to like you know it's like oh men need to smell good and they need to groom and stuff but there is something so hot when you are compatible with someone and their bo smells good. Yeah, I I agree with that. Like because uh, I guess it's like if someone smells bad, their breath smells bad or their bo smells bad. Doesn't that mean you I, could I, be related somehow? Yeah, it just there's some matching of the immune system mm. uh, that we allegedly some of the theories are we assess through smells. Mm. And uh, my wife is not in that category because she's worried all the time. About, and I'm like, don't worry. I like I like all of it. It's all good. Just relax. She can't get that through her head. I love the biological basis stuff. Like I always yeah. wonder with because of the... It's all biological. When you get right down to it, it, it there there's things that get culturally sort of expressed through the biology, but ultimately at the bottom, it's biology. And always. things that used to really be auspicious that now uh, are obsolete. So if like the premature ejaculation thing, like that almost feels like you would be more successful. Correct. That's that you're why, able to, th yeah. three pumps come. Yeah, that's pumps. why we have that. 
you know? Yeah, so yeah. I'm always like, you were probably, your fa you probably come from a lineage that was really able to procreate quite a lot. Because exactly there's, right. there's tigers around, like you gotta get that come out yes, quick. Yes, get you it know? done. And then guys that take forever, you know, but isn't the logic that you're more likely to get pregnant if you have an orgasm? And since it takes women so long to have an orgasm, if you're able to do it that long, it, you're probably a, a strong and should have your seed. Yes, but we're not sure about that one. Mm -hmm. We're certainly sure that if the seed gets in quick, you're more likely Look, to get pregnant. Look, they don't call me Ho Rogan for nothing. I mean, I mean, there's, you know, the we, we don't have many potters walking around the world, guys, do we? I mean, think of that, yeah. how rare that is. Is it true that the penis evolved to be curved to scoop out the semen of the competitor? Yeah, that, I, these are all these theories <laughs> that fly around. I, I've seen so, because I've been doing, you know, medical work for so long, I've seen crazy theories come and go, mm -hmm. and, and the same ones come back periodically, mm -hmm. and everyone thinks they're, they've discovered it for the first time. They go away. Yeah, it, it's a little more basic than that, I think. It, you know, we don't have, we have subtle mechanisms, mm. like on a cellular level, but the mechanical mechanisms are not that subtle. Biggest conundrum for me right now, mm. do I circumcise my son? What do you think? My gut is to do it. Beca well, because be you're Jewish, you know it. It's, but it's, it's, no, honestly, I was really against it until I knew, now there's a new way to do it. It's like a ring that just dissolves yeah, it's it. It's very simple. It's, it's not a traumatic not, thing. It is not a traumatic thing. If it was the traumatic way, I think I wouldn't be able to okay. do it. Okay, and, and here's the thing that, I, I, I don't have a horse in the race, except that I yeah. see all these, you know, prepuce problems later, mm -hmm. and circumcision later is a much bigger deal. Oh, and so the the what the very common thing should we put one of our uh, phimoses up there? Phimosis. Oh God! Do you know what phimosis is? Uh uh. <laughs> You'll be okay. This I was bad. with an uncircumcised guy for a long time, and I really appreciated how easy it was to give hand jobs. Oh, that's interesting. It was it was much easier so, to understand. So what happens is, uh, let's see, yeah, because go go give me that one with that one that your that your cursor's on. Mm. So you see on the left there, uh, yes. the the opening gets tightened because it tears and gets scarred and tears and gets scarred and the penis the head of the penis can't come out and it gets very painful mm. and so you have to do a circumcision which is what that cartoon shows well this is what someone said to me uh who had boys and she ended up doing it because she found out that the sort of a, a very likely way that i didn't want to say number one reason because i'm not sure of it that men die in nursing homes is from bacterial infections true you know so I, that would be thinking about my son later in 80 years you know later but and and by the way circumcision reduces the risk of hpv and mm, aids it turns mm. out so there's an international move to try to encourage and my son will be eating ass like your callers right um, i just however. feel it and uh and also that when they're teenagers you have to encourage them to clean it and it gets fungus but also and, to pull it down yeah. so that it starts stretching and I don't so it doesn't get that problem right like yep. you have to start encouraging them but, to but during sex if they get one tear which are pretty common you, you guys have heard me talk to these people all the time right Booth hell yeah yeah and uh, and they're like it really hurt it bled forever oh and god and now I might you know, it hurts oh. when I pull my penis head bleeding out. oh now you guys know what it's like I know. <laughs> Sounds you know, awful. We aim to please. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, yeah. So, I guess I'm going to do it because there's a more sort of less traumatic way to I do it now, I think I'd right? be pissed. You know, there, there was all this foreskin restoration stuff that went around for a while. People were pissed that it had been done to them, mm. which I thought was odd. I'd be pissed if it wasn't done to me and I developed a phimosis later. I feel like it's the way that it's done. It used to be just like a traumatic... Like, I mean, the fact that Jews, bless your heart, but the fact that you have a party yeah. where you hand a baby to a guy that A non-medical person. And then everyone claps <laughs> yeah. and takes photos and the kid's yeah. just traumatized. Yeah. I think there's a way to do it where it's like a topical anesthesia and it's yeah. a ring that just dissolves yeah, it yeah. slowly. Yeah, that's what you do. Right? Okay, thank you. Should we do a couple more videos? Uh, maybe some TikToks or something to just yeah. get get uh, Whitney. Give me fully, some more nightmares. Get her fully exposed to the, your mom's <laughs> house experience. That's what All I'm right, saying. we got like two or three TikToks for you. All right. Uh oh. They gave oh, boy. Trump for money again. That's the end of democracy. It won't be a free country. But I'm wrong. He has that right under the Constitution. So Christina collates all this stuff. She finds these people. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how She's she does so it. She's so wild. Dude. I, 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 the, to me, the most astonishing thing about this guy is the face hair. Like, why don't we take care of a little bit of that? Back to our grooming conversation. What she doesn't realize is that is her husband in 12 years. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Brutal. I mean, what is this? I love the fact that this guy is good at using TikTok is the most hilarious part. To yeah. Me. 
Let Trump run in 2024. God, I mean, him eating ass, that would be such a bummer. <gasps> Ooh, even eating veg. <laughs> eating veg would be kind of problematic, wouldn't it? What Ooh. was there? Was there like a caption to this? Does this guy have fault? Is he doing uh, well? Yeah, it's a let Trump run in 2024. Okay. That's his whole line of TikTok, huh? Sure. Yep, that's what he's into. I, I'm weirdly... Good for him. Yeah, that's why I feel good for him. Moving on. That's sort of how I feel. <laughs> I want to say thank you to all oh. of the women that showed interest in being my husband's third wife. Thank you so much, Mashallah. <laughs> we got a great large amount of women. I didn't expect it. It's taking a lot of time. I'm going through the list. I'm going to pick a few and then I'm going to present them to my husband. And inshallah, we'll go from there. So be patient with us. I promise we will respond to all of you. And thank you so much. I'm excited to meet you, inshallah. It's just taking some time. It's just I'm filing divorce papers right now. Things <laughs> the have been delight in her face, though, is is is, is 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 contagious. Bless her heart. Yeah. I, all I know is that never. I you know. I mean, he must have a ton of money or something. That I don't know something. But I, her I, dad dropped the ball. I know yeah. That. These these uh, sister wife things. Everybody ends up miserable. I mean, just watch the TV shows. Well, uh, so and also with the polyamory in general, right? It, the thruples, the, it's not work. working. It just doesn't work. I Do you know Jason Ellis? Yes, Jason? well, yes. So I thought, you know, I, I had never seen an open thing work long term. Right. Yeah, I'd never seen it. I, I've seen lots of people try. I've seen mm -hmm. lots of people swear by it. Mm -hmm. Although we're so great, and then magically, boom, it ends. Yeah, yeah. Katie and Jason, I thought, well, there, there it is. They, they, they make it work. It and always I, feels like someone's compromising, though. They're breaking up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I heard that episode and, and, that you guys did. Yeah, and I was like, oh, even them, even the one couple I thought could make this work. Yeah, it doesn't work. Uh -uh. We're just not wired that way. You can't tell what's going to come up emotionally. Mm -hmm. Somebody gets attached. Somebody gets jealous. Somebody is more in love or more whatever. Mm -hmm. Or, or I, you just can't predict what the feelings are. It's a boundaryless situation. Like, what and, if it's with two guys? And what if the girl leaves? Like, what happens to the two guys? I don't. It just seems like a lot of. It's there are armies of people. I say this all the time, trying to help two people have a relationship. Mm -hmm. Armies, and it's hard enough. You bring a third people in, it's just. Do you think it's just someone that wants to cheat, but they're too afraid of abandonment? Well, there. What I have found usually it's one person who's sort of into it mm -hmm. and foist it on the other one. It's rarely that they're both equally into it. But is there a, a iteration? Like I have a friend that her um, husband just tried to like open up their merit, but it purely sexual. Do you know what I mean? Like, is there it's, ever it's a version? Never. It's I'm with someone for 10 years. Yeah. I'm tired. I'm on the road. Uh, uh, you know, my vagina's doing this now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it's like just getting a sex worker or just it's never going to work well, if it's purely sexual. Well, I, I have said, you know, look, if you this is important if they, they're really wanting to do this. To me, getting a professional involved is the lesser mm -hmm. risky way of, but you still, who knows what's going to emerge when you see your partner with that person. You just yes. don't know. You don't know till you're there. Do you think a guy can go out and just sleep with a sex worker, come back and just be the same person in a relationship just as in love? It, it, yes. Or does it like start a little? It starts a little yeah. something. A and it it always, and, and I'm not saying that can't work out. It, it could, but it always diminishes the primary intimacy, right? Mm. Even if it's just to say, why did you need to do that? Mm -hmm. How can we make it maybe more satisfying in the primary mm -hmm. relationship? Get all that, all your stuff there that you were missing something. Mm -hmm. Or what was that? Or why can't you get it from that person? Mm. I don't know. It's, it's, there's the investment in the primary relationship is so important. Mm. That when you diminish that, you're, you're, it's like a bank account. You're pulling stuff out, right. and it, it. But porn doesn't do that. You don't. I guess mm -mm. it depends on the person. Depends on the person, but porn. I've never uh, porn. When it's an addictive, it does. Yeah. Uh, but I've never seen it really. What happen. do you think about VR porn? That's going to be like the remix of the. Two. I think that's when society comes to a close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's when it's a wrap. <laughs> right then. At least we won't have men. <laughs> so that's going to be yeah, very. You'll never <laughs> leave your house. That's going to be. I I worry about what that's going to do to some people. Right, right. Because it's going to feel so real. If it does, you know, because then it's like we're already seeing young men. I, it, it, there's a phenomenon that I'm seeing that I've never seen before. It sort of goes, well, you know, I don't want to be seen as toxically masculine. Mm. I don't want to be too aggressive. I'm, I'm accused of or anything. And, and if I have a beer with a girl. Stop like dating 19-year-old idiots. Thus, the Sorry. older women are yeah, come onto yeah, yeah. come onto the scene. Right? I don't even know my Twitter password. So, <laughs> I can't tweet about you. I can't. So, so, so that's where some of it goes. Is the older women. The mm -hmm. other place it goes. Oh, I have my porn. I'm fine. I'll just stay mm -hmm. by myself. 
And then I'm starting to hear about prostitutes now for the first time, young males nice. and prostitutes. So they're, they're just, women have fucked themselves up by making men feel so bad about their impulses and things mm -hmm. that they're hiding out. They're, yeah. they're, they don't want to be a bad person. They want to be a good person. Yeah. So they take it elsewhere. So with that happy note. There are times though that is getting a second or third wife, is that just tricking someone into being your cleaning lady? I mean, there are certain people that like need well, help. That's what that's what this woman seems to be. Yeah, that's like sort about. of you're like you can have them. Like I yeah. kind of need to stay in this, but I also need someone else to sleep with them. And, well, that's like, why do I think work. about that's kind of what Mormons do. Yeah, that's also why I think about somebody with a lot of resources. Like you're getting something else out of this relationship yeah. than just the relationship. Or the, you want to have a lot of kids or procreate. Yeah. It's like a religious thing to uh, amplify your religion or something. She seemed thrilled. She's Look, beyond. She's happier than me. So. She's happier than all of us. <laughs> so God she, bless her. She knows some shit we don't know. She knows what she's doing. Is that kratom? I don't know. So where do you want people to? Go, Whitney. Where do we people find you? Oh gosh, I'm just same everything. Whatever. Same everything. Yeah, same everything. Right. New special. We on need Netflix. to be less strangers. More. Yeah, I love uh, you. Each other's, I do too. I love How you too. How much fun? And uh, more each, each other's life. You're not that far away out there in the valley or not wherever the you are. Not the slightest. So, and you're going to come on my podcast soon. I hope. Oh, I, we are setting that. We have set that up already. So that's already good. Oh, yeah, actually, it will have happened by the time this airs. Oh, nice. So good. I can't so, wait. gentlemen, anything else before I uh, wrap it all up? Hell yeah, good show, guys. Good show. I appreciate the callers. I, those of you who are still on hold, please, we'll get to you in just a second, perhaps. Uh, appreciate the emails. Appreciate everything. 213-818-253-1693, of course, for the voice messages, which I've got to none of today. And Dr. Drifted Dark at gmail.com for some of these great emails. Um, thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.